Hello viewers, thank you so much for watching our content on Jatem Global Network. You're welcome again to our studio today. We say the Lord bless you as you watch in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we'll be having some other guests that will be discussing together again on their role and their view concerning the movie. And I believe you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and send me your comments. Your comments are very important. They are really helping us. Your suggestions, your suggest, your suggestions on different topics that you want us to discuss about, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Right now, we'll be going into the studio for further discussion. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to our studio. Thanks for honoring our invitation. The Lord bless you. It's nice seeing you and it's nice meeting you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, you were one of the cast members in Stone Throwers, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, please, can we meet you? Okay, I. I'm Justina Ajadi. I was Justina Ajadi in the movie. Okay, what is your name? Solomon Gloria is my name. Solomon Gloria. Wow. So what was your cast? Or um, what role did you play? I played the role of Justina Ajadi. Justina Ajadi. Oh, so what happened with Justina Ajadi? Okay, so Justina was a teenager who needed affection, care and attention from parents from her parents but she couldn't get it. So in the struggle of trying to find love and you know how to get away from everything that was going on at home, she met a friend in her school who was into drugs and you know the girl introduced her into drugs and she got into drugs and after some time she took a very dangerous dose and she died. But there was a divine intervention by the um, church members of that particular family. By the mercy of God. Yes, by the mercy of God. So they were able to pray and, you know, she got, should I say, resurrected from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she woke up finally and then her dad actually had, you know, he looked because he was all tired about everything. So after the girl had, you know, she was okay because it was actually a miracle in the hospital, you know. Someone was dead and suddenly just yes. restored. You know, it was wow. something someone couldn't think about, you know, something like that. So after ev everything, they thank God and then suddenly the father sh showed up and you know, everything was just like a miracle, you know. So when you were given the script to play the role of Justina Abby, Justina, how did you feel going through the script? The, how do you think you will cope with it? Okay, at first I was a little bit startled, you know. That kind of role required a lot of energy because there was a particular scene that I had to roll on the floor and, you know, behave like someone that was not normal. So it was like, how would I do this thing? You know, stuff like that. Those thoughts were just going through my mind. And I was a little, a little bit shy because my friends were going to watch it. They were going to laugh and stuff like that. But I needed the grace. Well, I asked for it and God gave it to me. So it was a little bit a task for me because the script, the lines, even though the lines were not really much, but it was something that I would have loved to do. Because I love acting, but that kind of role was it required energy. So we just thought that oh, I have to do it. It's the work of God. So that's what I just thought. That was pushed me to do it. That was just what I needed. Okay, uh, you said something about Justina that needed affection from the parents, but couldn't get that, and that made him to follow the path of the friend or the pair that wrongly influenced her. Uh, 
there are some children actually that they need affection but they are not really getting it from their parents probably because of the nature of their job or maybe they are not just friendly for who they were for who they are but do you think that is the best thing if you are not getting affection at home it's not the best thing to just follow a friend and take whatever offer they give to you okay what i think is should be the solution to teenagers and you know people out there you know they should try to seek counselors if their their parents are not giving them you know what they need because or they should try to you know go out to see so, someone they trust someone they know that you know is mature in thinking and you know you know can lead you in the right path because not all friends actually have good motives about you I mean, for you and you know some friends are just so evil they want to hurt you and stuff like that so what i think you should do is either you need a counselor or you need someone that you know that is you know you've watched the person and you know that this person should be able to give me the right advice the right path in which i should go so what i think that's what i think about So according to the script, uh, according to the movie, at a time when your father in the movie, you know, absconded from the home and you were no longer seeing him, he was not there for you, how did it affect you in the home? Well, according to the script, it made us to understand that that man was it was the type that had time for his family before he, yes before he had time for his family he had you know he created time to to be with his family at all times because there was a time in the flashback of the movie we saw how um they were playing together and stuff like that mm -hmm. so when the man left it was like a vacuum was left because the man had already left his duty post in the house. So And that brought about a vacuum. Yes, it brought about a vacuum. The the um wife lost the husband to an unknown person. The children lost him and you know that was what led to the whole thing, the whole drug. So that what I think is that um the man or should I say husbands in general have their places in their homes. Mm -hmm. So they are Lazy should not just be left like that because you can't there's no way you can do it the wife always has to be here for you know organization and stuff like that so what i think is that the man's absence brought more and more problems to the family so that's what i think so it brought more problems and so i pray god will help us as families yeah. so that we will not leave our duty post, especially to strange women and men. But the reason of this man leaving his duty post brought about the vacuum that you know almost destroyed the children, even not for the grace of God. It is my prayer for every one of us that will always be at our duty post in Jesus' name. Our vacuum will not be our places will not be empty in Jesus' name. And whatever we are supposed to do, God will help us to do it right. Now, as a student, given this post, given this script, and this word, has it, in one way or the other, or did it affect your academics? It didn't affect yes, because the location was scheduled to a time when I had the time to um, to read the script and you know give it my best. So the producer actually thought about it before constructing the schedule. So it didn't in any way affect anything that has to be. It was not doing school Yes, it was the location was not doing script we are dead. I had a little time to you know, reflect on the script and stuff like that. So it didn't really affect my academics. Wow. That is great. 
So it's nice having you on this show. But please, before you go, what advice do you have for our viewers, probably youths and teenagers, that probably their parents are not always there for them? Because I discover not even ministers of God, there are times that they are too busy to attend to their family. And they also have teenagers, they have youths, they are probably are going through one thing or the other and there's no one to even discuss with. So what advice do you have for them? Okay, so like you said, for ministers of God, what I would say is that um, children are the gift of God and parents are the custodians God has put in charge of them. And if you're a minister of God, God has put a work in charge of you. So you have two responsibilities. So you have to create time for each of the um, work because you can't leave one and face one. You just have to do the same thing collectively and pray for grace to be able to do it. So for the teenagers, well, I pray God will help us because mm -hmm. we are in a generation whereby it's not really easy to do what God wants us to do. So what I would say is that teenagers should surrender their lives and let God take over because with the rate at which we are going, our generation is getting spoiled by the day. The social media has taken over. So what I what I would say is that the teenagers should watch their steps. Try to commit their ways into the hands of God so that God will will take over their lives because we are the future. We are the generation. You know? So what I would say about women and wives is that you know Miss Saj, I think the movie actually gave in to temptation because there was a particular place she was trying to seduce a pastor and that was what caused the whole thing that the dad was you know at odds and stuff like that so women should try to abstain from anything that has to do with temptation not only women no, everybody we should try to you know stay away from anything temptation so i pray god will help all of us we just have to stay with god and keep our gifts as god i pray god will help us into this Thank you so much. Amen. So we should, the Bible says we should flee from every appearance of evil. Just the appearance. Not, not to walk. But we should flee. To flee, to, to fly. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So she said, not just women, not just our fathers, not just the youth, but to everybody, any appearance of evil, we should flee so that we will not fall into temptation. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Thanks for coming. Hope to see more of your movies and hope to see you again when invited to this studio. God bless you. You're welcome. So our viewers, thanks so much for your patience. Thanks for watching this, our guest in our interaction we'll be right back again as we continue and we have another guest in the studio god bless you stay tuned good day viewers god bless you for tuning into this channel again i want to tell you just a few things um by the grace of god i'm also an author and i've written quite a number of books and i want to introduce you to some of those books um the first book that I want you to read is Flimsy Excuses. This book is going to bless your life. And I want you to please um, go and get this book. Flimsy Excuses is on KDP Amazon and also on Okada book on the internet. So please, when you get to KDP Amazon or Okada, type Flimsy Excuses. That book will pop up and you can read it. God bless you. Another book that I want you to read is Market Empires. That book is so powerful. In that book, the Word of God came out alive, lucid, and direct. And you are going to be blessed reading that book, Market Empires. It's a parable that you need to decode by reading that book. It's going to bless your life. That book is also on Okada book. And it is also on 
KDP Amazon platform. You can read that there. Another book that I would like you to also read on those platforms is The Act of Acting. This is essentially for drama ministers and actors and actresses. I wrote that book from the Christian perspective. Art of Acting is a book that will help you as a drama minister, as a budding actor or actress. It's going to help you. And I want you to also go and check for the book on KDP Amazon and also on Okada Book platform. You will get that book. Then by the grace of God, I'm also a poet. Or by the grace of God, I have a collection of poems that I call God is Blind. Did I say God is blind? Yes, God is blind. Why did I say God is blind? You definitely need to find out in this collection of poems. You see, a number of poems there, maybe about 50 of them, and each of them will bless your life. So go look for God is Blind by Olasu Kwame Solomon on KDP and also on Okada book. Then my latest book is Self Esteem. The Inner Compass. This book is so loaded. The foreword was written by one of my renowned lecturers, um, Professor I.P. Fabiji. And you know, by the grace of God, the work is so researched, so much researched, and you know, it's going to bless your life. So please, um, all of these books I'm mentioning, they are also in hard copy. You can order for your copies and it will be sent to you wherever you are. So please go and read. Self-esteem, the inner compass on KDP and Okada book. That book will bless your life. It is handy and it is uh, meant for everybody. The youth, the teenagers, parents, old people. That book is so loaded. So please, all of these books are available on KDP, Amazon and Okada book platform. And also, we have the ad copies available for you if you want. Thank you so much. And God bless you. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to watch edifying contents, movies, spoken words, messages, and other contents. Thank you so much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. having you here thanks for honoring our invitation thank you very much Lord bless you in Jesus name Amen. Uh, please can we meet you okay um, my name is uh, Joshua Kolawole Adishola Joshua Kolawole Adishola you were one of the cast in my school class yes what was your role I played the role of Toby Toby so what did Toby do in the same class? Well, from season one, we saw that he wasn't supposed to be the choir, uh, the music director in the church. So, but because of the uh, scandal between the former uh, music director and a choir member in the church, so one way or the other, he, his dad used the influence to make him the music director and we discovered that he also had his own flaws in the movie too that is in season one he he had uh, sexual intimacy with some of the choir members particularly he even raped one of them i think he raped uh damilola fast forward to season two he made restitution and we saw that God forgive him. In the movie, he was restored. You know, but you know there are some scars that will not Yeah, not go to them. So even in season three, he had to make a restitution. He had to 
make restitution again to Damiola in season three. And we saw, we saw that even after, with everything that he did, after God had forgiven him and restored him, we discovered that he also be, he began to do really good in the choir. He, he did well in the choir. If you watch uh, season three, you will discover that they had um, so many uh, musical uh, outreaches in the movie. Thank you very much. Uh, please, I want to ask this. You know, uh, something happened between Israel and Faith Ibaru, not yesterday. That has to do with premarital sex, which led to pregnancy. Now, you know, these days we discovered that some people, it is only when they are pregnant that they confess their sin in the church. And even some people try to cover up this pregnancy by committing abortion. Probably because of what people will say. I know it happened also in that movie that even the church where, you know, the, the church were, the church was the greatest enemy in the movie to this, uh, in these people, I mean, Israel and faith. Now to you, as a brother in the church, what do you think the church, not just the pastor, as in brethren generally, supposed to do in the case of uh, Israel and faith, if there's a situation like that? Well, we are all from different denominations and every church, every religious institution have their own way of correction. And the Bible asks us to also correct in love, correction with love. Well, according to the movie in season one, I think one thing the church did that wasn't so good was the politics that was played over the issue mm. so if they could have done it in a better way correcting them in love you know we kind of emphasize the fact that they committed sin and up to the point of getting themselves pregnant you know we there are so many instances in the world today, in fact, in Nigeria, where you will discover that a prominent member of the church is uh, found or uh, is found guilty of such uh, act, and the church tried to bury it. It's very, very, very wrong because that's a seed you have sown, which you would reap. There is no church that will sow such seed that will not end up reaping. You just discover at the end of the day similar cases begin to occur and when you try to talk to that person it will be too late, be too late because they will point back to just yeah, this like, what did you do point. that will be a reference point to uh to their own um, uh, misdeeds yeah so one thing the church should do is correction fine correction at least i know of churches that will correct you first thing they would call you to uh, the disciplinary committee of the church and maybe give, put you on suspension pray for you give you guidance and these are things that we that we need not criticizing people because you know I was somewhere one day and somebody was saying you know that woman that, was, that is shouting let me just say that that woman that is because it was a, a similar situation you know that woman that is shouting did she marry a virgin mm. and I was like Wow. <laughs> All right. Wow. So I feel we should not always be ready to throw stones at people. Like the title of the movie, Stone Throwers. But let's let's talk to people. Do you know some people it could be out of peer pressure? Do you know some people are actually lured into it? Okay, for instance, there's a case I know of someone that actually going to impact the party innocently with a friend the friend even the friend was in and both of them were drugged and raped yeah. and herself got pregnant now when the case got to 
their church. I won't mention any name. The first thing they did was criticizing her. After, uh, uh, coincidentally, she was the assistant music director in the church. And they were like, that's what she does, that's what she does, that's what. So it's not always right for us to criticize. Less, even Jesus Christ said, <laughs> whoever has not sinned should cast the first stone. In every relationship, we have to set boundaries, particularly in uh, a romantic relationship headed towards marriage. There are boundaries, boundaries that need to be set. There are some lines you don't cross. Mm. You don't cross some lines. You don't mm. cross the line of sexual purity. Marriage is, uh, marriage is profitable to dead on the power. So, it's a no for you to cross boundaries. You know, there are some uh, blessings that are attached to sanct- uh, sanctity in relationship. And you might say, people might say, ah, nobody sees me. Or the person might say, yeah, maybe I didn't get pregnant or there was nothing like sexual transmitted disease. But there are some things that should have been added to you for knowing that you might never get them again after doing that. Then let me just add that, talking about sexual purity, it is not until sexual intercourse is involved mm. before we talk about sexual purity. Even yeah. our hearts. Yeah. The Bible admonishes us to guide our hearts with all diligence. What are the type of thoughts we are oh, thinking that is going through our minds? All those things determine whether we are pure sexually or not. Then there are some touches that are no godly. Romance in a relationship, it's also a form of uh, sexual impurity. Not until we are even engaged in sexual intercourse before we talk about sexual impurity. So I want to uh, say that to appeal to every youth there that as God will be helping us in our relationship, he said we should set boundaries. Boundaries is not all about sexual intercourse alone. We start from romance, kissing, romance of any form. And I pray God will help us to abstain from all this. You know, oftentimes I have met with people that, you know, when it happens, they come to confess and when I ask them questions, I discover that would be the, even be the first time they are doing it. They have never done it before. But before then, they have been involved in all sorts of touches. They have been involved in kissing and, you know, romance, careless talks. And before you know what is happening, it leads to sexual intercourse. So I just want to say to every youth, just adding to what my brother has said, that it is not only sexual intercourse that they say. You are such a wonderful brother. You are not just an actor, also a singer. You are double talented or multi talented. The Lord bless you. Thank you for using your time to honor God and to serve God. You are welcome once again. The Lord bless you real good. To our viewers, thank you so much for your patience. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Uh, in case you are yet to subscribe, please do. Send in your comments and share with your friends. We would really appreciate your patience. Hope to see you again next time. Joining us, view our content and be blessed. Next time. Thank you.